Hello and welcome to this next video. I'd like to share a few things around unit of measure. What's a unit of measure? If we look at our item list and our stock, there's one dome, one back, one camera gimbal, one front, that one, uh, the radio. What's the unit of measure? Either unit or each. I use each. So most of 99.9% .9 of my stock items are all I use a nut, and I use a screw, uh, and I use a radio, one unit. There's one or two exceptions. Uh, there is one item that comes two in a pack, and these are props, all right? Now, it's not really, strictly speaking, a correct application because these props aren't the same. The one is clockwise, and the other one is counterclockwise. So you'll never just use the one. Unless, of course, you do a repair, but in terms of a production run, you'll always use a clockwise plus a counterclockwise prop, so you may as well just stick to one bag. So in my bomb, I will have two bags for props instead of four props for a hexacopter, for a, uh, for a quadcopter, for a hexacopter, copter, I'll have three bags, which will give me six props. All right, so it's not strictly speaking applicable to this but it does show the principle all right so what do we do we go to unit of measure and we say one box has got two units in it all right so you set this up per item the next item might be three units in a box so this setting strictly is for um, this item and you'll go ahead and you'll do a purchase. I'm not going to go through this whole thing. Um, we've done this um, on a previous video. I don't want to stretch this out too long. Um, fill in this invoice. We want to update the stock. And then the important bit. If we click on here and we say, oops, 9443, it brings up that. We say we're purchasing one. All right. But instead of each, we say we're buying a box of these. All right. And then you can see it goes and fetch this conversion factor. So it'll put two into the stores. Now, if we complete the transaction, it'll fill it in. I'm not going to do that now. The same, we can effectively see it uh, with the next example, which I'd like to share with you. And that is 3D printing filament. If we just get that up on the screen, uh, filament, there we go. And now what we do is in filament, our stock unit of measure is grams. Why is that? Because um, in the design, this is one of the designs, I've got a little bit of video at the end to show how we print this. Um, and if we put it through the slicer, then it tells you it's going to use three grams. It's going to take 34 minutes. All right. So we actually go ahead and we set up our bomb. Uh, SKU 40,015. That's that part. That's the LiDAR sensor cradle front. That's the object avoidance sensor cradle. Um, and there you can see we stipulate, I've actually made it 35 minutes, and we use 3 grams of material. So you can set up your bomb pretty um, accurately. Now there is a different way of setting up the bomb and making this default so you can actually have one bomb for many three pr 3D printing. The way I've done it, I'll have to have a bomb for each and every single 3D printing part. Um, there is a way that one can possibly do that. I must just investigate that. Perhaps I'll make a video about that later, but for now, this is spe specific to this part. All right, so um, let's first of all purchase this um, item. I've already done this. So I'm just going to show you the purchase invoice. Uh, I bought it here. There we go. And here we say we're buying the printing filament. We're buying one of them, one kilogram roll. And then important, click that down, drop down there. You'll see the purchase unit of measure is kilogram. And then it goes and fetches the 
conversion between gram and kilogram, which is a thousand. Now, where does it get that? All right, but it auto fetches this. It says stock unit of measure is gram. This guy is buying a kilogram. The conversion is a thousand. So let me just first go and show you the stock, and then I'll go and show you where you set this up as a global. Uh, the stock ledger on stores. There you can see I purchased on the 28th. I purchased some filament, and it's actually added a thousand to the stores. Previous balance was. 994 because when I pur purchased a thousand I did some printing that's the video I'll show you I did two printing runs so 994 was left and together with a thousand I've now purchased I've got 1994 left all right so now it's easy to manage your stock if you draw up your bombs saying I need one or five or 20 grams of this material. Right, where do you put this conversion factor? You say conversion factor list. It brings up all the all of these are def, uh, default in the system, all right? From gram to ounce, pound to ounce, etc., etc., ampere to kiloampere. For one reason or another, they don't have kilogram to gram. So you just click new. I'm not going to do it now. And it's rather simple. You just enter three things, kilogram, gram, and a thousand. How does it work? There are, there's a thousand of these in there. All right, so whatever is here, it's of that in there. And that's as simple as that. So the difference between the two is this is a global um, relationship. I mean, it's not going to change. There's, there'll always be a thousand grams in, in a kilogram. All right, so you can make this a global conversion factor. When it comes to the prop, props in a bag, the one bag might have two, and you buy from a different supplier, and they might have four. So you, you, you better to do that from an item point of view, and don't do that on a global, because not all boxes contain four props. So you might have a problem there. All right, so hopefully that um, gave you some insight as to how this works, and um, you perhaps have an idea of how to apply it in your own uh, application. I'm just going to show you a quick video of how we did the printing. You'll notice right in front the Raspberry Pi. It's a Raspberry Pi 400. Um, I'll start the video now. It's just too quick. I don't want to um, find myself falling over my tongue. Raspberry Pi 400, which is a Raspberry Pi in a keyboard. Everything's in the keyboard. And I use that together with a screen to access ERP Next. Here in the front, the Raspberry Pi. There's the printer. And then, of course, I'm using Ethernet over power um, to connect to the Raspberry Pi and the entire network. There's the MicroTik Ethernet over power. That's how I access ERP Next. And there you can see the job card counting. Right, I've got a better close-up of that job card for you there. That's what the job card looks like. All right, and you can see it's counting, so it's actually busy printing. All right, that's it. Hope that you found that helpful. See you in the next video.